Hello everyone, you are very welcome to our information session on our LLM General and LLM in International Comparative Business Law. The format of today's information session is a short presentation and once the presentation is over, I will introduce you to a recent graduate of ours, Peter Watts. And um, after that, then we'll allow you to ask us any questions that you may have. So we'll begin now, and I would like to pass you over to Adele Youth, who is the Programme Director for the LLM General and the LLM International Comparative Business Law, and is also a lecturer within the School of Law. So I'll pass you over to Adele now. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Lisa said, I'm just going to talk you through two of our master's programmes in the School of Law, the LLM General and the LLM in International and Comparative Business Law. So we'll start out with just a little bit on the School of Law itself. Um, so the School of Law is comprised of a number of research centres, which you can see on the uh, graphic just on the left side of the screen there. So we have the law school itself, and then we have a number of, of research centres uh, like the Centre for Disability Law and Policy, the Centre for Housing Law, Rights and Policy, and the Irish Centre for Human Rights. So um, we have a number of master's programmes uh, from each of the centres, and the ones that I'm going to talk to you about this morning are two programmes that are run by the School of Law itself. So in the school, we aim to deliver innovative legal education in what is a dynamic school that's dedicated to impactful and high quality legal research. And there is in the school an emphasis on uh, research led teaching. So when you're doing a master's program at the School of Law, the people who are teaching you will be people who are you know, engaged in researching in those areas and in publishing in those areas and so on. And in the past few years, we have been recognized um, in the rankings, for example, um, the law school is in the top 200 of the QS World University rankings. Uh, the law school won law school of the year at the Irish Law Awards in 2019. Um, and just recently, the university as a whole was voted the university of the year for 2022 by the Sunday Times. So that just happened over the weekend there. So we're, we're proud of the kind of recognition that the school and the university more broadly has been achieving in recent years. So just move on the slide there. Thanks, Lisa. So there are a number of reasons why we think you should choose law at NUI Galway. Um, the university is recognised in the top 2% of universities in the world, and that's the QS World University Rankings uh, System. Um, we have a global network of alumni and contacts, and the university is very strong on kind of keeping in touch with graduates. Um, you will learn from the best in the sense that, as I said, um, there is a very strong emphasis on research in the law school and in the university more broadly. And so the academics you will be learning from are at the forefront of their areas. So, you know, they are the people who are leading research and, and driving policy and change uh, around the law in these areas. Um, a lot of our modules uh, have external speakers who are invited to to come and talk to our students as well so you will have a number of workshops with world leading practitioners and scholars and actually I suppose one of the benefits of doing things kind of partly online is is that um you know we can we can have the opportunity to speak to to people who who maybe wouldn't be in a position to come on campus and speak to us um international field trips are a core element of many of the LLM programs now obviously with the COVID situation that hasn't happened in the past uh, year, um, but hopefully from next year onwards, when we're back to a, a little bit of more normal situation, we can get those started again. Um, and there are a number of opportunities on our programs as well for internships and placements, and particularly in the LLM, International Comparative Business Law, that's a very core part of that program. Um, but in all programs, we do link in with the Career uh, Development Centre at the university, and you can avail of really excellent career development advice uh, from that um, office. Right, so first of all, I'll talk to you a little bit about the LLM International and Comparative Business Law, which is a relatively new program. It's um, been running for, I think this is our third year. Um, 
as with all of the master's programs at the School of Law, you can do it full time over one year or part time over two years. And the program won the postgraduate course of the year in law in 2020 at the um, Higher Education Awards. Um, there is a real focus in this program on skills and employability that, that will equip you with key business skills like critical thinking, um, negotiation and advocacy skills, as well as things like mediation and drafting legal submissions as well. Um, and in the uh, the panel that awarded the course postgraduate course of the year in law in 2020, the, they commented specifically on the excellent innovation and teaching methodology with strong links to industry. Um, that's a feature of the program. Um, assessment on the program, again, like this would be a very common um, means of assessment on, on programs, on LLM programs in general, but you will do a number of essays, presentations, minor thesis, and so on. Um, you might also have, uh, if you did, for example, there is a mooting module, a business mooting module, which is a distinctive feature of the program. Um, mooting there would play a, play a role in, in assessment of that module. But generally speaking, essays, presentations and a minor thesis are how LLM programs are assessed. So reasons why you might want to undertake this program. So if you have a particular interest in um business law subjects like for example if you liked company law or commercial law for example um this might be one that you would be particularly interested in um some features of the program like international field trips um one feature the placements so we have a number of prestigious placements for the top students on the program and this is something that students have enjoyed in the past. And, and Peter will say a little bit about his experience later on. You can see on the right hand side of the screen there are some of the organizations and companies that we have links with. Um, you'll recognize, I'm sure, some of the names here. These are some of the top law firms in Ireland. Um, and we add to that on, a, on an annual basis as well. So, for example, uh, Peter, who you'll hear from later, did his um, a placement with Maples, uh, which is a, a large um, commercial law firm based in Dublin. Um, so there is a real focus on skills and employability. Um, if you do the placement, right, so if you're one of the top students in the class and you get awarded a placement, you do that instead of writing a minor thesis. OK, but if you are not doing a placement, then you do a minor thesis over the summer period, which is due in early August. Um, on this program, you'll benefit from expert lecturers and guest speakers. And uh, one thing that I mentioned a few moments ago is the fact that we have this new business law mooting module on the program. And we can also now, uh, from this year onwards as well, uh, take advantage of our new moot courtroom, which has opened just in September. And um, so you would be doing, if you're doing that module, you'll be doing it in the mock courtroom. Um, and uh, that's a really excellent module that students enjoy. In terms of careers, um, a number of our graduates have gone into legal practice um, and also um, with a focus obviously on international and comparative business law, our graduates have gone into the commercial sector, you know, including commercial law focused firms as well as multinational professional services firms. Uh, some students go on to do further study. So you might find that when you're doing your masters, maybe particularly your thesis, that there's something that you'd like to continue working on. And so you could um, continue on and do a PhD in that area. And as with all kind of law programs, uh, students as well or graduates go into alternative careers, you know, for which having a law degree is a huge asset. So that's the LLM and in International Comparative Business Law. I'll now say a little bit about the LLM general program. So this again can be done over one year on a full-time basis or two years on a part-time basis. You have much more flexibility on this program in terms of the modules that you can select and in terms of the topic um, that you choose for your minor thesis, uh, because basically you can choose, you have one compulsory mod module, <laughs> excuse me, which is advanced legal research and methods. And then you can basically pick any other modules that you like from the suite of LLM programs um, that the school offers. Uh, so you can really kind of tailor um, your module selection to your, your own uh, specific um, interests. 
So it's designed for students who are seeking an advanced postgraduate degree, but you don't want to specialize in any particular area of law. Okay, an assessment again is by means of essays, presentations, and a minor thesis. So reasons why you might want to do the LLM general. Um, as I said, if you're not, you know, if you don't have a burning desire to, to specialize and to choose to do a program that would um, focus in on one particular area of the law, then this is an ideal course to do, right? Because you can tailor it, as I said, to your own specific interests with a wide choice of modules. Um, we do organize international field trips as well, COVID situation permitting. Um, you can benefit from the Career Development Centre's advice throughout the programme. And there is, again, on this programme, a real emphasis on skills development. Um, you'll be benefiting from, again, expert lecturers and guest speakers who are um, you know, experts in their, in their fields of interest. And uh, you have the experience of writing a minor thesis then as well over the summer period. In terms of careers that graduates have gone into, again, of course, legal professions. In fact, some LLM students might even be doing things like um, FE1 exams, you know, the, the exams for solicitors whilst they're doing the LLM program. Um, you might again choose to continue study, so go on to do a PhD. A number of graduates have gone into the NGO sector um, or in advocacy roles or working in the public sector. Or again, there are a number of alternative careers um, that students go into, uh, which, as I mentioned earlier, having a law degree or an advanced law degree is a real asset. Now, just a little bit on the modules. Um, these are um, subject to change, but generally speaking, these would be the modules that you can do. So you see on the left hand side are two, uh, the two programs that are relevant to us here. So, for example, in International Comparative Business Law, um, you can pick from EU Competition Law, International Commercial, Prop commercial Property Law, the Mooting module that I mentioned. There's a Legal Skills module that focuses on advocacy and dispute resolution. Um, advanced Intellectual Property Law, Commercial Law in Context, um, EU External Relations Law, uh, and so on. There is one compulsory module, which is the Advanced uh, Legal Research and Methods module. Um, and you must do 60 credits in modules, right? So that's six modules um, over the two semesters. And then you do the thesis over the summer period, which is worth uh, 30 credits. So you do 90 credits in total. Um, under the LLM general, then you have, again, just the one uh, compulsory module, which is the advanced legal research and methods module. And then you can pick from any of the other modules that are offered under any masters. Um, so just, you know, some examples there like sentencing and penal policy, medical device law and regulation, crime and disorder, and then, you know, any of the other um, modules that might be offered, for example, under the Disability Law and Policy LLM or the Human Rights LLM um, or the LLMs in International Criminal Law and Humanitarian Law and so on. So there really is very wide choice if you if you decide to pursue an LLM general. Career support is provided throughout the programmes um, through a focus on things like workshops, um, in which you can develop your CV, you can organize kind of one-to-one -one sessions with the Career Development Center. Um, they give really excellent guidance. Um, the uh, Career Development Center also organizes the fairs, the jobs fairs and employer events. So for example, we have this Careers in Law Week um, during which you have the opportunity to meet with leading law firms in Ireland and, and abroad. Um, and because of the COVID situation, they've been held virtually for the past two years now, so for this year and last year, um, which has actually kind of increased the number of employers attending. Um, so that's something that happens every year and is organised by the Career Development Centre. Um, so you get really good support from them. Um, and, and sometimes I think perhaps students don't make enough use of it, but it is there and they're really good 
And as I said, you can organize kind of one to one sessions as well if you want maybe specific advice on a particular aspect of your CV or something like that. OK, so I'm going to hand you back over to Lisa now for the last couple of slides around making an application and uh, scholarships that are available. Great, thanks Adele. So very quickly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to make an application and about some of our scholarships. So to make an application, you can do so online by visiting nuigalway.ie forward slash apply. The entry requirements for our LLM general and our LLM international and comparative business law are as follows. You must have an improved second class honours degree, um, at least a 2-1 in law or an interdisciplinary degree in which law was a major component. Applicants with a graduate diploma in law may be considered, but will only be admitted where they demonstrate a strong academic performance in both their undergrad degree and diploma. And then in exceptional circumstances, um, we may accept applicants who hold a degree in another discipline or who don't have a 2-1. And we um, look at your um, relevant professional experience in law in this instance. In terms of international, if you're an international student, um, you can find out more about country specific entry requirements at nuigalway.ie forward slash international. And with regard to closing date for applications, there is no closing date for our LLM programmes. Offers are issued on a continuous basis. So once you apply, you normally find out within a few working days whether or not you have received an offer on the programme. Therefore, we encourage candidates to apply as early as possible um, as once places are full, um, obviously then um, you, you will not be accepted onto the programme. Finally then, our scholarships. The university offers taught postgraduate scholarships for EU students and they're worth 1,500 euro. In order to apply, you must have been accepted onto a full-time taught course at NUI Galway and have attained a first class honours in your level eight primary degree. We also have a range of international scholarships, including merit-based scholarships, country specific scholarships, and then there are also the Government of Ireland scholarships. And you can find out more details about all these scholarships at nuigalway.ie forward slash postgraduate underscore scholarships. Finally, before we finish up the presentation, if you would like to know more about the School of Law, you can visit nuigalway.ie forward slash law. And if you think of any questions um, once our talk is over today, you can email lawpostgrad at nuigalway.ie. And you can also keep up to date with what is happening in the School of Law on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And before um, I start answering your questions, um, if you think of any questions after time, can you please um, pop them in the chat or else raise your hand. But before we start answering your questions, I would like to introduce you to a recent graduate of ours, Peter Watts. Um, so Peter completed the LLM in International and Comparative Business Law. And I suppose, Peter, if you could maybe, first of all, um, tell us about why you decided to choose this LLM programme, please. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so for me, I studied the Bachelor of Corporate Law, a four year degree at NUIG. And it was kind of at the end of that then that I decided I wanted to go down the commercial practice route. And I just thought that the LLM, International Commercial Business Law, would give me kind of a great overview of commercial law and commercial practice when I hadn't that in mind throughout my undergrad degree. Um, and the LLM to me offered modules that very practical and very skills based and very um, employment focused, which is what I wanted, I had in my mind. Um, and the ability to tailor the degree then to my own interests was a huge factor. Even within specific modules, you covered a huge range of subjects, but you could focus on the one area that you liked and do your 
whether it was your class presentation or your end of semester essay or your minor thesis um, on that one area. So you weren't trying to cover huge swaths of law that you had no interest in. And then I suppose the opportunity to interview for placement then was an added bonus at the end of all that. Um, they're not easy to come by in any means. So the chance to get your foot in the door of any big law firm in Dublin or Galway is always an added bonus if the commercial solicitor route is what you want to take. Great. Th thanks so much, Peter. And I suppose um, from the one year programme, um, what would you say um, were the highlights of completing the programme for you? What stood out to you? Um, yeah, well, for me, obviously, my placement stood out. It was two months I did at the end of the summer. Um, that obviously stood out for the reason that allowed me to use all the skills that I had kind of learned, the mediation, the legal research, the writing, the drafting. Um, I also did the mooting module, which I would highly recommend to anyone if they're considering it. It's not normally something I would do myself. I kind of stay away from things like that. But I decided for the you that was in it, I would try it and chance my arm. And it was extremely enjoyable. It was the full 12 weeks of group work. It was kind of you covered legal speaking, legal drafting, you know, legal mannerisms. And then we got to argue our cases in front of um, Judge Peter Kelly, the former president of the High Court. So, you know, it was all worth it, I suppose, at the end. And it is just a very well-rounded module. Um, and then I suppose having all the modules in mind, the guest speakers, you know, every module has seminars with leading commercial practitioners or leading scholars. So you really are getting, you know, the top end of the, the academic scale there and you're getting such a high standard of lecture, I suppose, from all over the world in some cases. Great, thanks. And um, you, you did your work placement with um, Maples. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your role with Maples, please? Um, yeah, so I did two months uh, last summer with Maples. I was in their finance department. So I spent around three weeks each on the banking, the asset finance and the structure finance teams. Um, I suppose I got a great, I suppose, broad range of work. I didn't go in as a group of 20 or 30 interns, so rather self the focus was just on me. So I kind of got the workload of what all the other trainees were getting at the time. Um, the work ranged from, you know, research and legal initiatives to drafting client updates for the LinkedIn. Um, I did share charge documents. I briefed teams and legislative initiatives. You know, I gave some presentations to different teams. Um, I mean, overall, it was a really well-rounded experience. It was definitely a learning curve. It was my first internship, but it, you really are given um, really good training on the job and they really do make you feel welcome up there. Um, and I suppose to get into such a big law firm like that in Dublin for two months is extremely hard. So I was delighted to get it. Um, and I do have the chance to interview with them for a traineeship um, sometime in the coming months. I think it's just before the start of the summer. So to get that chance, it's definitely nothing to be shying away from. That's brilliant. It sounds like you got a very vast amount of yeah. experience. And I, I know you mentioned you're going to apply for the trainee programme with Maples in the coming months. But I suppose in general, um, what are your career goals? Um, for the future as of now I know it'll probably change a lot yeah. <laughs> what are your plans now uh, yeah so I'm just joining the compliance and finance team of um, insurance and pensions company in Galway so that's kind of just to give myself that business experience and the business acumen that all the top law firms are kind of looking for um, I've just started my FE once as well so I set two in the October sitting just gone past so for me it'll just be try and get the eight FE ones done and if I can get some business and legal experience um, in the next year or two and then you know have that all behind me when I apply for some traineeships or internships as well. That's great thanks so much Peter um, if anyone has any questions please do um, feel free to pop them in the chat you can ask Peter or Adele or alternatively if you would like to um, raise your hand and turn on your microphone um, that's fine too so we'll wait a couple of minutes and see if you have any questions. And Peter, you've also um, secured an internship with Eversheds for next summer, is that right? Yeah, um, yeah I have um, a three month internship, I think it is at Eversheds Sutherland in Dublin. Um, I did that through their trainee application process, which 
I suppose wasn't what I wanted, but they were extremely positive and they said that, you know, I had all the necessary skills, all the necessary qualifications, just came down to numbers. So I suppose to get the opportunity to go up again in another big law firm in Dublin, obviously it'd be an invaluable experience for me. Um, and, you know, the LLM definitely stood to me in that regard. It's excellent. Even just a talking point in an interview, you'll find you can get lots of skills that they're looking for and lots of experiences that they're looking for out of the LLM, whether it's teamwork from the mooshing or legal research, legal writing from that module or the mediation module. So the skills that you have there will definitely stand if you are going down the route to commercial practice. That's great. Thanks, Peter. Um, I don't see any questions coming in, so we might just leave it there. But if anyone has any questions um, that they think of after today, you can email lawpostgrad at auigalway.ie. I will pop it in the chat now. So thanks very much for joining and I'd like to say thanks very much to Peter for giving up his time today to talk to us about um, his student experience and Adele I'll let you sign off. Yeah thanks a million Lisa and, and just to add my thanks to Peter as well for taking some time out it's always great to hear from a graduate um, as well as, as emailing Lisa if anybody wants to email me as program director I'm happy to answer any questions as well um, I'll put my email in the chat there too it's just Edel Hughes at nuigalway.ie. Um, so if there's anything that you think of maybe later on and you have a query, just, just drop me an email. Great. Thanks, everyone.